Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? I can hear Peter. You can hear me? Yeah. Sorry about that, everybody. Yeah. I can hear you. I think Ben's having a problem with his Zoom account and um, yeah. probably throwing his computer out the window. <laughs> Sorry for the delay, everybody. This is on my Zoom account. If it looks like we get timed out after 40 minutes, we might have to log out and log back into the same account, but uh, we'll go for the 40 minutes and see how we go. Brilliant. Uh, over to you, George. Thank you for having me. Uh, can you hear me, Peter? Yeah. Great, I will crack on. Good evening, everyone. So for those of you who don't know me, I'm George Cousins. I'm a, one of the Irish Era race coaches. I'm a freelance race coach and I'm a sailmaker. The uh, topic for this evening is boat speed. So I've got quite a few videos of various lengths to show you all. And we can go through them and then see what that brings up boat handling wise. Um, I'm just, Peter, if you could again just enable screen sharing for me. Yeah, just trying. Great. So, host has disabled attendance condition. Okay. Cool. What have I done? Um, it was working for a moment, and then it, then it was disabled again. That? So you're, that's your screen sharing now, Peter, aren't you? Yeah, hang on, I'm trying to work it out. Okay. Stop share. Okay, how's that, George? Does that work yet? Brilliant, thank you. Great. So you should all now be able to see my own desktop. Yes, nod, nod if yes. Brilliant, okay, so we will crack on. So I've got, we'll start with some upwind boat handling. Um, I want to keep it sort of interesting and interactive. So rather than just list on a whiteboard, as I might do at a normal weekend, you know, what's good and bad with boat handling. We're going to um, just go through some videos and then talk about what that actually brings up. So I've got about 15 videos in different sea states, wind, etc., etc., And then we can have a chat. So the first video here. So I'll play it through once or twice get you guys to absorb it, and then we can have a chat about it. Okay. Okay. So this was um, on a sort of a medium wind day. Uh, so it's a good starting point and it shows us what we can, what we're looking for in medium winds. 
So we want to be as powered up as possible. We've, the sailor here has got a decent amount of picker and cunning on though, it for the gust. But I think what's interesting about this video is the chop. There's quite a bit of big waves there. I'll go back again. You can see there. Re some really choppy, steep, nasty waves. And you can see the, the difference in the sail set up. So he's going upwind relatively flat. And then just before the waves approaches, he actually heels the boat over a little bit and then uses a lot of rudder movement. He's really jabbing that tiller extension with the leeward heel, which allows the boat, the bow to lift up and then come back down. If the boat's flat, when we move the rudder, which it's just steering the boat, but when we're heeled to leeward, excuse me, when we're he heeled to leeward, when we push the rudder, it's lifting the bow, and when we pull the rudder toward us, it's pulling the bow back down. So by lifting and pulling the bow back down, we're trying to maintain contact with the bow of the boat to, to, the, um, to the water. And it also stops the waves just smashing over the front of the boat. You can see after, the waves hit, or what, uh, probably during actually, he, he can see, the sailor can see that they're very steep, so he instinctively lets the main sheet out and bears the boat off a bit so that it doesn't get knocked sideways. Okay. Next video, where are we here? Okay, so we're sort of sticking with the boat speed theme. This is a windy day in Weymouth, uh, and I'll, this video I think illustrates really well the importance of sail controls and, and getting sail controls on tight, probably tighter than you would think in strong winds. So I will play it through once and then we can have a talk about it. Okay, now you can see here, this was a couple of winters ago with um, some sailors who were quite new to the aero at the time. And you can see here that most of the sailors ha haven't got anywhere near enough kicker and cunning them on. So the booms are quite high, the sails still look quite full. And a consequence of that is that they're too powered up, the boats are heeled over and the, and the boat isn't driving up wind. So it's a super quick video this, but I, I think it just illustrates really well that when it gets windy, we need to crank on those sail controls and get on as much as we possibly can. And that's going to allow the, the sail to flatten and it's going to reduce power from the top of the sail, which is good. We want to keep the drive low in the sail and it's going to reduce the writing moment. So we can see this sailor here with the Where's Wally bobble hat on, hiking really hard, working the boat hard, but he's got nowhere near enough kicker on or cunning him on. So the sail is too full for the wind conditions. Okay. Next little video is, I can find it. Yes. So this is a slightly longer video and I'll, I'll play it through a couple of times, but I think that the main um, coaching point and note I wrote about this was that it's a sort of encapsulates good all round medium wind trim. There's nothing, there's nothing um, 
crazy going on here or overly physical. It's just nice and solid and smooth and it's, it's what we want to see. So I'll play it through once and then we can have a talk about it. Okay, so there's there's three or four things that the sailor does really well here. It's it's, it's a relatively gusty day. Um, it's sort of me, mediumish winds, fully fully hiking in the gusts, and then the lulls, the shoulders are coming in a bit. So the the boat is flat, which we know is fast, but possibly a bit bit more subtle, but just as important as that is that the heel angle is consistent. He's not moving from side to side too much he retains that sort of five degrees of, of of heel which is is really good the main sheet is trimmed in quite hard which is important in lighter winds we we want to be able to keep that main sheet in tight because that's going to give us the height especially in the five rig which has a tendency for lee helm to bear off a bit we want to be able to keep that main sheet pinned in and you can see that the main sheet is tight, so he's got a lot of leech tension. So there's a lot of return off the leech, which is going to give him power and that pointing to windward. Just before the gust, the sailor moves his shoulders out. So he's being proactive, not reactive. He's not waiting for the, the boat to heel over. The head's out the boat, the head's looking forward, he sees the pressure coming down and the shoulders go out. The third good thing about this little video is, is he's been quite smooth and efficient with his steering. The steering is very deliberate. There is some chop and there are some waves and when, when there's a bigger set of waves, there's a little bit of, of steering being used to get the boat through, through the chop. But as soon as it flattens off, the tiller goes back to the middle of the boat. So drag is reduced. Little bit of steering there just to get over that big wave and then back to neutral. A nice smooth tack. We don't, we're not going to get into tacking and jibing this evening because we've done that in the past and, and the, I've got an entire 90 minute session that's recorded on the Facebook page for anyone who's interested. So we'll gloss over tacking and jibing for now. And again, on the other tack, it's similar but different. So he's staying nice and flat, working the boat a bit and playing the main. So th this video looks quite unusual to me, George, because it's got quite a bit more kicker on than I normally see five sailors using. The leech is straight and the boom is probably, it's about horizontal, isn't it, to mm. approximate. And often we see the five sailors sailing with their booms pointing up because the five rig's got a very bendy mast, which means if you don't pull the kicker tight before you pull it tight, the boom does point upwards. Um, and it strikes me, I think a lot of our five sailors are maybe 60 kilos or less, and they're probably physically 
unable to just pull straight from the cleat the amount of kick attention that you need. And if I, I have a problem um, understanding that because I'm 80 kilos and I can lean back on it. But if you are 60 kilos or lighter, you're probably going to struggle to pull it on. But with the arrow, with all our main sheets in the middle, you can use the main sheet to pull the kicker on. So you pull the main sheet tight in your tiller hand. And then while the boom is low because of the main sheet tension, you then pull the kicker tight. So you're using a main yeah. sheet purchases to tighten the kicker. And then your kicker hand isn't taking any weight at all. And you've got all the leverage through the main sheet, which is a way a light sailor can do that easily. And you'll save all the wear and tear on your kicker cleat. Yes. No, that, that's, that's a good tip, isn't it? Yeah, if anyone's struggling to, but if it I feels that they lack the strength to get enough kicker on. I think this is Noah, isn't it? And, you know, he's 75 kilos, so there's maybe the proof. Yeah. But he, he can get it on at 75 kilos, but we often see sailors less mm. than 60 kilos just never having enough kicker on. Yeah. If I could make an input there, um, what we found at Grafham with uh, lightweight sailors was that, well, a particular female lightweight sailor when she joined, she had a fibre rig and similarly she couldn't get the boom down horizontal. And, and uh, across a group, a group of three of us, we came to the conclusion that the ideal boom horizontal height that you need to get the boom tip down to is something like 82 centimeters measured from the um, toe strap, rear toe strap tie down. Okay. And if you can mark your kicker at that point, that works we found for all rigs. But yeah. Peter's right, to get down to that, you do need to pull yeah. the main sheet in first, possibly follow with Cunningham, and then put the kicker on. And once you've got that set up, you're going upwind. You, you leave the kicker set, if you like. Certainly yeah. you're going upwind. No, I think that that's true. Um, definitely with... The windier it is for the fire, the, the the more the more cookie you can get on the better. But you just obviously when when it gets windy, you have to don't neglect the Cunningham. As you pull on more cookie, you're pulling on more Cunningham. As you're pulling on more Cunningham, you're pulling on more cookie, etc. Right. We will go. I've got quite a lot of videos to get through, so I'm I'm mindful we've got to march on. So boat speed specific. This is in Pool Harbour. Uh, there's some stuff on pinching versus footing. So high and slow in that high mode versus low and fast low mode. So you can see in this little exercise we did, it was a, a rabbit run straight into a lane hold exercise. So basically the boat below, Ned is trying to sail high and pinch off the boat to windward, much like on the start line. So it's a good exercise for that that you can do. Uh, and we can see that both these guys are trying to sail as high as they possibly can. So the main sheets are in, they've got a decent amount of alcohol let off to give that return off a leech and make the sail quite full. Um, not much cunning them at all because that would just depower the sail. And in when we're trying to go high in light to medium air, we want as much power in the rig as possible. And now I give the instructions for them to go low and fast. So you'll see. They dump some main to get the boom out and the shoulders come out. When we're going low, you have to hike hard. When you want to go high, you can get away with being a bit lazy or not hiking quite so hard. You can just push the tiller and take it deep out of the sail with some, uh, with some luffing. But when we're going, when we're footing, you really have to work the boat quite hard and get the shoulders out.
So then I've now, if you could hear, I've given the instruction to go back to high mode. So again, the main sheet comes in, the boat is nice and flat. Okay. Next little video. So I'll play it through one more time. And I've just got in my notes here that the, the main um, point with this video is, is the importance of hiking quite hard. The guys, uh, the two boats to leeward and this chapter of women are probably are hiking pretty hard and, and consequently they're going a bit faster. So it just reaffirms that really. The sailor here in the blue cap and the red is, uh, from memory, was, was quite light compared to the other guys. So you can see he's struggling a bit. However, what he does do quite well, he manages to dump some main sheet while still keeping his shoulders out. Quite often, we know that when it's windy, we want to be adjusting the main sheet a bit. But we want to do that while we're still hiking out. If we're hiked out fully and we get a gust, the boat starts to heel over and we go in to ease the main sheet, that's the opposite of, of what we're trying to achieve. So he still keeps his shoulders out, keeps his good posture and his, his head out, and he's, he's letting the main sheet off there for that gust there. And then that allows the boat to come upright. And then in the lull, he draws it back in again. Is there something there on how you hold the main sheet, George, to be able to do that, to stay hiking out whilst easing it? Um, well, that would be the, there's two things though, isn't there? One is actually the tiller hand. So you want to hold your tiller on the end. Um, and that, that's going to allow you to hike out hard without pulling the rudder with you. So you're not you're just yanking on the rudder. And then also holding the sheet in a sort of overhand grip. Uh, is that what you're alluding to? Yes, yeah, so I think I, I trying to picture it myself. I wouldn't so much let the main sheet run through my hand. I'd probably have my arm bent, and yeah, a straightening of the arm would be enough. Um, maybe yeah. with a small steer as well. Um, but the danger is if you had your main sheet wrapped around your hand with your arm extended, the only way you're going to release the main sheet is to lean in, which is exactly what you don't want to do, isn't it? Yeah, that's right. And it's, um, I think some of the other chaps do it in this video, did it really, really well. And it's a comp in those sort of a 10 or 15 knot breeze where it's quite gusty. It's a combination of, of keeping hiking quite hard, a little ease of the sheet and a little luff with the rudder. So it's a combination of, of those two things. If you just ease the main sheet, then the weather helm will reduce and then the boat bears away a bit. So you're sort of easing main sheet, which depowers the rig, but then the boat's bearing away and you're powering it up. And so you're chasing the wind down. And in fact, what we want to do, and, and you see it done really well in some high performance boats and, and skiff boats. Um, perhaps it's a little bit more subtle in the aero, but you're, there's a very small luff and a small ease of the main sheet. That first few inches, especially if, if you've got kicker, sufficient kicker pulled on, 
that first six inches that you dump the main sheet will with a little luck will achieve a lot more than than the next foot of main sheet you let off if that makes sense so we're playing the main sheet regularly but trying to keep hiking hard like peter says but we're playing playing it frequently but but not by very much necessarily if we just let the boom in fact i'm going to make this guy look a bit bad i'll pause the video uh, where are we? When there. For the conditions, that's probably too far out. So we we don't we don't really want to eat unless we can really really help it. We don't want to ease the sail that much. If we're going upwind in whatever this is, twelve, twelve or so knots of breeze, and, and we're having to dump this amount kick this amount of um, main sheet, that tells us. I need to be more depowered. I need to pull on my cunning more. I need to pull on my kick more. Good. Next little video, right. Where are we here? One second. So we'll move on to some downwind videos now so I, want, I do want to cover a bit of downwind speed and boat handling um so the first video i've got is 120 so that's there yes so this is a mark rounding immediately into a downwind so i just want you to have a look at the trim and the angles that we're sailing, even in light winds, to try to get the boat speed and build VMG and also weave around to get the gusts. Now, remember here, I suspect this sail is, is a little bit, there's a bit too much rocking going on, and really a rock or a pump should be done in conjunction with a change of angle. So I'm not saying everything here is legal. What I want us to look at is how he's um, trimmed in the boat and how he's using the differences in, in angle to turn the boat. So we can see that in these marginal planing conditions, the sailors are sat really far forward in the boat, which I think is good. There's, there's a tendency a lot of us have um, to sit maybe far, further back than we should. Um, and we think the boat's planing sooner than it actually is. But in these sort of light to medium marginal stuff, we want to be nice and far forward. Okay. Right, okay. So the next little video is a bit of downwind and it's gonna focus on um 
boat speed as it relates to seating position. So I, I think this is something that we've not really touched on um, in, in any of the talks that I've done, how we actually sit in the boat and how we lock ourselves in. And the more locked in we are, the more we can turn the boat using the trim and altering heel, not, not the rudder. So you can see here, the sailor in red is, um, was quite new to the boat at this stage and is kneeling and sat forward. So this is an example of what we don't want to do because you can't look behind for gusts and, you, and you're not locked into the boat. He's just, he's on the boat, not, not in the boat, if that makes sense. The sailor in front of him is sat side on, which we know is better. Um, but it's very important when we do sit side on that we lock ourselves into the boat in some way using our knee and our foot, or if we put our foot over the toaster. Peter, what do you do downwind to lock yourself in and stop yourself falling out? I normally have my bum down rather than both knees down. And I might have one knee down, but only softly. But I try and put my, normally try and put my rear foot on the fluid edge of the cockpit. So that yeah. if I want to heel to lewid, I can put my weight over my rear foot, which is on the lewid edge of a cockpit, wedged in, as you say. And then you're yeah. more mobile. But I think as soon as you put two knees down, you're not mobile. And the yeah. danger is if you're facing forwards, you can't see those gusts coming behind you. Yeah. So just just again, this this young lad in red. So that was we don't want to be on our knees because if we're on our knees in the middle of the boat, we can't we'll struggle to heal the boat on top of us. And we know we're on, when we're on the run, we want to be more akin to this sailor here in blue because the center of effort of the rig is then above the foil so that the boat is nice and balanced. If we're flat on the run, the boat isn't balanced and it's trying to scoot round into the wind. George, However, this is Mark. May I add something? Yeah, sure. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hi, everyone. Um, one thing, what I do downwind, like Peter, I have the loop, the, the, the back foot at the uh, and knee down at the, um, the edge of the cockpit, but then the the forward knee, in this case for this sailor, the right knee would be up by the dagger board. And yeah. then I could put my my bum on my heel if, if I need to. And then, um, but then you can be very mobile to be able to, to, to affect the turning of the boat and balance of the boat. Yeah. So I am actually on my knees and the butt is up. But instead of this guy having his knees both in the lower, in the back cockpit, the forward yeah. knee could be up by the dagger board. And then you're turned a little more sideways. And um, I think he'd be in a little better, a more agile position. Yeah. Thank you. And that, that's it, isn't it? We want to be, however we sit and everyone's proportions are a little bit different. And some people got big feet or small feet or whatever. whatever. We want to be able to, press to leeward to instigate that leeward heel to turn up. We want to better heel the boat on top of us and have the confidence that we won't fall out backwards. And we want to be able to push with our front foot to move aft if it's wavy to lift the bow and then scoot forward again. So we've got those, we need to be locked into the boat and, and have the ability to move across those four axes. Sammy here, um, I'm gonna make him look quite bad but he isn't sufficiently locked in. So as the boat heels on top of him. <laughs> he goes into windward. Because he was sitting down. If his butt wasn't sitting down, he'd be more, ag more agile. Yes. And I think, yeah, he couldn't then claw it into the boat and he, he wasn't locked in. Sorry, Sammy. 
I, I think, to be fair to him, he was probably looking at me filming and I distracted him. But um, it, I just thought it's it's just a good illustration of what you know why we must be locked into the boat. Good. Moving on. Well, we're hitting 101. So this is some pretty strong downwind sailing short steep chop because we're about a mile offshore at this point with an offshore wind so i'll play it through once and then we can have a talk about it Okay, so I know um, this was sort of within a jiving drill, um, so we can ignore the jive a bit, but what I think this uh, shows quite well is the trim fore and aft, when the boat's on the plane and going on a wave, he moves back. When he wants to catch waves, he moves forward and he's sailing big, big angles to get the boat on the wave. There is some steering, the rudder is doing a bit of movement, but the majority of the steering is coming from the heel. When he wants to bear away, he heels the boat on top of him and dumps a bit of main treat, the boat bears away. When he wants to head up into the wind, there's a bit of leeward heel, the body goes into the boat to, to generate that leeward heel and there's a sheeting on. No, wrong video, excuse me, one second. Where are we here? On the previous video, George, of uh, yep. I think it was Jonathan Bailey, uh, just on that last jibe as he came out of it, you could see he had his feet locked into the boat. He actually had his forefoot, I think, locked into the leeward side of the cockpit and yes. his other foot locked in pressed against the other side so he you know he was locked in but he he because his feet were locked he was there ready to move if you see what i well i'm sure you see what I mean. exactly that yes uh, and this is a very very agile position he's got his in this case his his right foot his front foot um yes. pressed against the front of the um the cockpit and then then he can push himself back if he needs to get to the back of the boat. His left leg is flat against the boat, so that allows him to press down into the hull to instigate leeward heel, and he, he's locked in. And he's sort of crouched, so he, he's even within the boat, his center of gravity is quite low, which actually does become important when we're weaving downwind, and otherwise you do a really great bottom turn, and then the sheer G-force just throws you back. So that's yeah. why it's important to be quite low and, and locked in. The George. Uh, yeah. Um, yes, I was going to yeah, say, yeah, I don't know if you, um, don't know if you had the video of me from a GoPro like pointing back at me at Paintant, but um, that one shows it quite well with like the whole feet being locked in. Yeah, I've got. I'm. I'm coming to. I've got some more. Um, okay. Yeah. But you. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you for that. Though. I'm, it's just I'm a bit closer. To... Yeah. Who was that? Who was that speaking just now? Uh, Jonathan. Jonathan, who? Question mark. <laughs> <laughs> Bailey. Thank you. 
for those sorry. of us who aren't aware of you, uh, who live in the states thanks and elsewhere sorry <laughs> So Jonathan, have I got, so I, these are some of the ones that you shared with me the other day. It's the um, one that says uh, downwind including upturn. So just left of your cursor. That one, yeah. Right now, that's this is a really good video, isn't it? So it shows how locked in he is in the boat, how he's not using much rudder. The boat and the heel is, is doing the steering, not the rudder. The rudder's just fo following the boat, and uh, it it shows his his position of his of his feet and knees. Look how much fore and aft movement there is as well. Yeah, exactly. There's a lot of forward and back, isn't there? Just like a surfer, we go to the front of the board or boat in this case to catch the wave. And, and that, then as the boat is accelerating down the wave, we can move back. He's also going from side to side. So he's going along the wave, not just down and then crashing into the wave in front. And look how, how he moves the body well to leeward to prevent it from healing to or too much. Really good. Look at that. Beautiful. All right. Okay. So I want to staying with the downwind. These these are quite short, um, but it, it uh, and this actually goes back to a day sailing we did in pool. Um, and so this is a, a downwind day. It's a bit lighter, so I think it just shows that difference in the video we've just seen, which is super super windy and the boat is going to plane really easily, to a lighter wind day where you've got to work the boat quite hard to catch the waves. So I'll play it through a couple of times. So we can see some big, big angles here. So he's going very hard by the lee with a wave. So the boat, although he's sailing at more distance than the, the guy in front, he's, he's going a lot faster. So again, it's that trade-off which relates to VMG. So this is another really good video, actually. So it's quite reasonably windy, but there's a big, big, big wave. And it, it shows, it's a really good illustration of, of how we do top and bottom turns, how we turn the boat to stay with the waves.
Jonathan, was this, it's hard to tell actually, was this uh, a run or a, broad, a very broad reach that had been quite deep? Um, I think it was a run, but I went a bit far left and then I was coming back in towards the yes. middle of it now. Okay, okay. With the waves. Is there a reason you haven't got your centre board up or was it just you couldn't get it up? I think I just forgot to be honest. Okay, yeah. And you can see that transition there from most of this video, he's sailing, it's a run, but he's sailing on a very, very deep, broad reaching angle. And then just at the end of the video, in about 10 seconds, there's a transition where he goes, he bears away and goes by the lee. He sees this wave here, bears away there, and that's the bottom turn. And you can see the body weight goes forward a little bit, and, and the body weight comes in the boat a little bit. So he's got this really big juicy wave here and he bears away to stay with it and runs along the trough of the wave. Good, that's a nice video. So we've got, I'll tell you what we'll do. I've got a couple more of my own here. Okay, so this is uh, somewhere completely different and a bit of a lighter wind day and it, it's a good illustration of how hard in the lighter, moderate planing days, how hard we've got to work the boat to get on the plane. Also, what's quite interesting about this video is the swell, which is rolling in. This is in Cornwall, so you've got a, a decent sort of Atlantic swell rolling in but that's offset to the wind. The waves and the wind are slightly different. So from on one jibe to the other, the technique will change a little bit. On port jibe, on this jibe, you can see the waves are actually running behind him. So there's a, he has to work quite hard to catch the waves. And then once he's on the wave and has caught it, the sailor then does his best to bear away to maximize VMG. So similarly to what we said, uh, a few weeks ago on the reach where you go high in the lulls, low in the gusts, you're going high to catch the wave and then once you're on the wave, you're going nice and low. Okay, not the best filming in the world by me, but you can see here that the wind is coming across um, more from the west and the waves are coming in from the south. So the waves are coming like that, the wind's coming like that. What that means is the sailor goes high to catch the wave like he is now. And then once he's on it, he bears away as deep as he can while staying with the wave. And that's a, a theme that we've touched on a little bit before in lighter wind uh, reaching is that you have to come up high to get the boat on the plane. And then you go as low as you can while keeping the boat still planing. So it, it's maximizing um, the VMG.
Great, right. So this next video I forgot to highlight, so bear with me two seconds while I find it. There we are. So this is now, so we've gone right through the wind ranges. We've gone sort of windy, we've gone light marginal reaching, and then this is, is survival stuff. I'll play it through a couple of times and we can have a talk about it. It's very short. So we can see here in this video, the sailor is so, so, so far in the back of the boat, which is really good. So the front of the boat is almost completely out of water. They've still got a little bit of daggerboard up, which is important because it, it's going to make the boat less skittish and less likely to broach and easier to jibe. Um, so that, that is quite important. And they're running downwind. They've actually got a reasonable amount of kicker off, but still a decent amount of main sheet in, um, which actually kind of depowers the boat a little bit. And the, this is pro it never looks as windy on camera, but this is properly, properly um, survival stuff. So we can see sailors all the way back in the boat and running as deep as he can and the boat's still on the plane. Good. Okay, so that's all the video I've got for this evening. Um, I'm happy to sort of, we can open it up. We can do a bit of a um, bit of a Q and A if if everyone's got time. Um, or oh, Peter, are you happy with that? That's great. Yes, George. <clears throat> Does any anyone questions? have any questions then? Yeah, hello, hello. Do you hear me? Hello. Yeah, hello. It's uh, Ali calling from Iceland. Uh, one uh, question: When you are uh, going downwind and the uh, the boat is uh, heeling over you, there uh, used to be a technique, at least on laser, when we were in that situation, that uh, if you uh, push the push the t if you if you are in the situation you find that the boat is coming too much over you, you can um, work against that with your tiller by pushing it away. Yeah. Um, um, yes. So that, that seems to be working quite on air or from my point of view. So this is what you're referring to here, isn't it? Trying to yeah, prevent... When, yeah, to prevent um, your, the boat coming over you. This. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. so this is yeah. really common. So this happens for two main reasons. Either we're sat too far out, so we pulled the boat over, or the rig is trying to capsize us. So yes. if, if we have the main sheet too loose, too far out, and a uh, too loose kicker, Mm -hmm. or, or a combination, then the leech of the sail goes forward relative to the mast. It goes forward and, it, and the top of the mast is trying to push us back. So yes. we have to counter that. But I know you know this, I'm just going over it. Now, in this situation, some sailors instinctively push the rudder away to try to head the boat into the wind to get more power. But that's actually wrong. It's a it's a really important and um, uh, it's a mistake a lot of people make is that they push the rudder away. Mm -hmm. We can all see if the sailor here in blue pushes the rudder away now that the boat yeah it's, it's the opposite you do yeah 
Yeah, it's the opposite. And in fact, it's making the problem worse because it's just tipping the boat over even more. So instead, what you do, as soon as the boat starts to come over you, it's that. So it's a pulling in of the main sheet and you're bringing your body weight into the center of the boat. Two things simultaneously. So sheeting in and a moving in. If the boat starts to get tippy, it's instantly pulling in the main sheet and I'm bringing your body weight into the middle of the boat. If, if, yeah. the, if you find the boat is really tippy a lot of the time, it's probably that you don't, you have too much kicker off. So the leak is just doing this and it, it's trying to, to throw you over. But yes, to answer your question, it is, the technique is the same as, as in lasers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'll look at Rusty and well, which position or what, which way to pull or push. But uh, I've been in the situation if the kicker is too loose, that uh, yeah. the boat uh, in heavy wind, the boat starts to be less controllable on, on, yes. on the run. And uh, yeah, uh, quite surprisingly uncontrollable. I think there's three things which make an aero much more wobbly on a run. One is the kicker being too loose. Another is lifting too much centerboard. If you lift up much centerboard, then it gets wobbly very quickly. And if ever you're feeling you're a bit too wobbly on the run, keep the centerboard down a little bit further. Um, and the third one is letting the main sheet out too far. So anybody who's got a main sheet, which is really good for sailing by the lee in light to medium winds, should think about putting a knot in their main sheet on windy days mm. so that they can't let out the last meter or two of it um yeah and keeping that bit of main sheet in so it doesn't go quite so far forward will keep you a lot more stable if you're having stability issues and even for sailing fast i don't think i let my main sheet out too far on a run even even when i'm sailing by the lee it'll it'll be in a lot further wet when it's a really windy day which actually helps doesn't it if the people some people think that by the lee means that the main sheet's all the way out beyond 90 degrees but actually if you, if you sit down and look at it, it the opposite is true as Peter says it in very strong wind we can still sail by the lee and that's great and, and in fact the boat's very stable when it's going by the lee but we can have the boom in at 80 degrees even 70 degrees and that the the, the the airflow will still go from leach to luff um, and, and the boat's actually quite happy there any any more questions just a quick one george um peter touched on it there um when we talked about um how much you take the centerboard up on these boats it's certainly not anything like what we used to do on lasers and it seems to be a lot less sensitive to where the centerboard is can you talk us a little bit about that um I think that there is a trend as well um, to sail with more centerboard down because more people are sailing more angles. If you look at um, a picture of the Laser Worlds in 1980, they're sailing with that much centerboard up. In 1990, it's that. And then by about 2010, it's like that. Yeah. So there's a trend in single handed dinghies, and, and that's evident in the literature. Um, but the area specifically, the foils are quite small. They're high speed foils so that they're um, thinner. So you can get away with having a bit more down that's going to give the boat that purchase and grip to sell the angles. Um, it's important to lift some board up in strong winds, not just because it's faster, but it just makes the boat easier to handle and, and less tippy. So it is important to get some board up, but it, it's not actually that important to, to stress about an inch or two um, especially when it's windy and we want to be at the back of the boat and working the boat we don't necessarily want to be going forward um, but as peter says it's if the boat's tippy then then just nudge a little bit of board down if you can and, and consider main sheet and kicker yeah. i think there's a bit of a history lesson here i think it was mid 90s when Robert Scheidt and Ben Ainsley taught the world how to sail their lasers <laughs> downwind and they were doing big angles and turning through big angles to catch the waves on a run and at that point they're using that centerboard to turn on without centerboard down they'd be side slipping all the way 
all the time for those big turns. And Steve Cockrell sums it up really well to say, it's like a pair of skis. Um, you're accelerating off that centerboard when you're turning. Um, and if you don't have a centerboard down, you haven't like got the edge of your skis on the slope. So mm. you do push against that centerboard quite hard when you're healing the boat to assist the turn and turning. And yeah. our centerboards are a lot less drag than a laser too, which helps. Can I ask a question about um, the depth of the sail downwind and the various wind strengths? Yeah, sure, yeah. So how, how would you change it depending on how strong the breeze is? Yeah. The depth of the sail. So on the run, we, we obviously want a fuller sail than going upwind. Uh, mm -hmm. We know that. Um, so we want to, def we always ease Cunningham when we're on the run and we always ease Kicker. Uh, the outhaul, we do ease a bit, but it will have less of an effect. If you, while I've got this still up of the mast here, if you see when Sammy, who's sailing downwind, has got his kicker off, the mast becomes quite straight. If you then compare that to the mast bend um, of boats when they're going upwind, you can see the mast bends a lot more when we're going upwind than when we're going downwind. So that in in and of itself will make the sail a lot fuller mm -hmm. because the luff curve of the sail which is fixed and the mast changes the carbon mast changes so that's what generates a, a massive amount of fullness and by easing the coming in so once those two th you've done those two things the sail becomes full much much fuller naturally um, and you you don't have to ease that much um, outhaul uh, and in fact, in strong winds, I think Peter will agree, it pretty much takes care of itself. You can set the outhaul for the beat, and then as you go around the woman mark, you're letting the kicker and the coming off, and the sail becomes fuller, and then you can pretty much leave it at that. Um, yeah, Peter, on, on you, a run, what's your take on that? On a run, I'm not too fussed about the outhaul because it's giving you sail area when you're going downwind. Um, but on a reach, you do get a lot of power from easing the out all a little bit and if you're in a situation when you're trying to promote planing or trying to promote fast planing a loose out all is good to generate mm. some extra power um, but i think you let your kicker off to straighten the mast and gain a lot of power and you let the cutting them off to, to fill the sail but also it then tightens the leech a little bit again because you don't want the leech too loose if you're trying to sail by the lee as well yeah. because that's then your luff and if it's too loose and open um it's not good um so easing the cunningham tightens the leech after you've eased the kicker which is a good thing if that makes sense yeah yeah that all makes sense <laughs> so we can see here in this still um it's, it's quite a nice sail shape. He's probably got the outhaul very loose here, actually. Um, but mm. in these marginal planing conditions, you want to get as the sail as as full as you can. So you can see he's got no cunning them on, so the the front of the sail is full. L not much kicker on, so the mast goes straight, which makes your sail fuller. Um, and he's eased the outhaul a bit, so the sail almost becomes spinnaker-like, in that sense. Mm -hmm. The only thing you want to be careful of here is he's got very little kicker on, so the leech is quite loose and the boat becomes quite playful and skittish. Um, and that's evident by the fact that Jonathan has got is about to put his whole body weight over to the mm -hmm. other side. So a lot of me, um, perhaps beginners or intermediate sailors would, would of, of capsized to windward here because he's got his main sheet so far out and no kicker off, but because he's, he's a very good sailor, he, he's expecting that and anticipating that and the body weight is over and then he gets that acceleration. But this is just an example of a very loose, very powerful sail setup, um, but it does come with um, risks. <laughs> That's great, thanks. Yeah, sorry again, it's a for I think it's, uh, from my point of view, at least, uh, 
the depth of the sail or the chamber in in the middle where the numbers are is uh, compared to other boats many other boats surprisingly deep so you uh, I don't find that you need to play as much with the outdoor as with uh, many other boats. I'd, I'd agree with that, actually. Yeah, I would. Yeah. So, so just when you ease the kicker and the Cunningham, you you uh, get the whole depth of the sail. Yeah. Uh, which you are depowering with the on on the on, on when you are sending up and with the kicker and Cunningham. So when you're going down, you just ease the Cunningham and the kicker. And uh, then you gain all this depth again, and all yeah. the power. Yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I can add to that uh, about the. This is Robert England. I uh, the, the easing of the kicker and, uh, and the main sheet and so on. There is a beautiful shot of Mark Jacoby. Uh, I think it's at Karnak Worlds when he comes to. Uh, is it? Is it? It's one of the downwind marks, and he just goes round this. And you can see that, dear, dear, you bless you, Mark. You did it beautifully. Um, you uh, let the kicker out a bit too much, I think. And to see how quickly you scrambled over the side of the boat and got it back again was was very amusing. But it it does illustrate the point perfectly. I don't know if you can recall yeah. that at the moment. Oh yes, I can recall that moment. <laughs> <laughs> the last race, I was exhausted. It was the last um, lured mark we were um, going. Yeah, yeah, yep. Yeah. Uh, how you managed to get that back, I have no idea, but you did. You had one leg over the uh, over the leeward rail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. John Rickles here. I think a key point about the uh, outhaul and the clue strap is that if there's any load at all on the clue strap uh, and you ease the outhaul, then the clue strap doesn't move. It's only when it's unloaded that it uh, will move at all, if, if at all. Um, um, so yeah, possibly. You might want to just like a bit of dry lubricant on the boom or something but you're right it, it will ease better when you want to reach than, than a run necessarily you might have to put, pump the main a bit or, or dump the main just to give it a bit of a flick um you are permitted some shock cord also that would help it yeah. helps tremendously shock cord elastic along the boom to the clue yeah, it doesn't need to be much, just to, to pull, uh, as Mark says, just to pull the clue in. Right. Um, to help slide it along. Okay, any more questions at all? Okay. No questions? Everyone in the chat, I posted a video, an onboard video um, that I took recently. Uh, this is Mark, um, Mark Jacoby, um, from a recent frostbite race that we had. Um, and it's kind of interesting boat speed wise, because we're talking about boat speed today. I was sailing a seven against nines, but um, especially in the beginning, seeing the difference between pointing high or footing low, and, uh, and then downwind also, um, trying to hold off nines going downwind and um, the effect that wake has of on boats. If you're a boat behind and the wake of the boat ahead, how important it is to, to try to stay out of that. And how I was able to control boats behind with my wake. Uh, oh, take okay, a look that's at it. Interesting. It's on YouTube. Brilliant, I'll have a look at that. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark. I'll, I've copied that. I'll try and get it onto the Facebook as well. So we've got a recording tonight. We'll get it on Facebook later to, or YouTube to, for people can look at it, revisit and look if they haven't seen it. Thank you everybody for your patience this evening. Sorry we were late again. Ben had some emergency, I'm afraid, and got pulled away. So I got another link out. Next week, we've got David Batty talking through the new 2021 to 2024 rules. Um, so tune in next Thursday, the evening before Easter, 
um, for that at the same time. Thank you again for your patience. And big round of applause to George. Thank you very much indeed, George. For all Thank, of you, all. Thank you. Thank George. you, George and Peter. And all Thank you, George and Peter. I uh, found these sessions very, very useful. Good. Thank, Thank you, George. Much. Thank you. Even Good evening, everyone. Notes. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, everyone. guys. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks a lot. Well done, George.